you don't know Jack You don't know Jack Hello children my name is Professor, Professor Von, Von Bonfire, Bonfire, and I am here to take the spark out of ignition! <laughs> am I done? No! <laughs> okay, that is good. Now, I suppose you don't know me, and you don't recognize me, which is okay. But I don't want you to confuse me with other famous professors. First of all, I am not Professor Marvel. From the Wizard of Oz? Anybody? No? Not so much? Okay. I am also not to be confused with Professor X of the X-Men. Because I am not him. And I am not bald. And he's not real. So do not confuse me with him. Or perhaps do not confuse me with Professor Higgins from My Fair Lady? Musical? Anybody? I could have danced all night? No? Okay. And please do not confuse me with Professor and Marian from Gilligan's Island. Get it? The professor and Marian. The professor. And, okay, I'm just too old for you, but that's okay. I have a cool mustache, and that's all right. Okay. So, do not confuse me with those professors. Please do not confuse me either with Doctor Doofenshmirtz, which, of course, he's not really a professor. He's more of a doctor. So, please don't confuse me with him either. Or, of course, do not confuse me with Doctor Who, who is also a doctor, not really a professor, um, or Dr. Octopus, of course, doctor also, and I'm not one, I'm just a professor, and please don't confuse me with Dr. Justin Beamer, who is also a doctor, but now don't confuse Dr. Justin Beamer with Justin Bieber, because he is neither a doctor nor, well, you know. So anyway, but I digress. That, that, that's the story. Do not confuse me with those famous professors or doctors, because I am Professor, professor Von, 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 von Bachfire. Bach Bach it is hard to say sometimes. And I'm actually not here to take the spark out of ignition. I'm here to share your verse for the day. So, here's what I want you to remember for your memory verse. It comes from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14b. And this is what it is. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. That is your verse for the day. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. From Esther 4.14b. So you do well to remember that. And you will see me again. I'm okay. Have a good day. I'll talk to you kids later. Goodbye. Oh, what's, what's the matter, Greg? Did you find out that the local Dunkin' Donuts is closing? Don't even joke about that, Wilson. You are joking, right? Oh, yes, I'm joking. Uh, listen, but, but what's wrong? I mean, why the big sigh? Oh, nothing. I, I just wish I had a million dollars. Hey, I, I heard a song like that recently. Oh, yeah, of course, Greg. We, we all want to be rich. I mean, then we could buy anything we wanted. No, no, it's not that. I just read about this family whose house burned down, and, and they need money to, to buy things that got burned up. And I was just thinking, you know, if I had a lot of money, then I could really make a difference. Well, Greg, you don't need a lot of money to make a difference. What do you mean? Well, haven't you ever heard the story of Queen Esther in the Bible? No, what'd she do? Well, you know, she was this Jewish girl uh, who became queen because she was so beautiful. What are you saying, Wilson? Do you think I'm so beautiful that I could become queen someday? Uh, no. But listen, she was queen. And while she was queen, this really bad man talked the king, he tricked the king, into writing a law that was going to kill all the Jews in the kingdom. Wait a minute. That would mean Esther would get killed. I mean, she was a Jew too, right? Exactly. Well, then why didn't she just tell the king he was a big fat dummy for making that law? I mean, she is the queen, right? She is, but, but it wasn't that simple. I mean, in those days, kids, um, nobody talked to the king unless he invited them, not even the queen. So if you went and spoke to the king without being invited, you could likely be killed. And if you said the, something to the king that he didn't like, it could have been even worse. Who did this? 
Oh, who do you think? Heyman! I told you he hates us, hates our whole family, and, and now he's done it! He got the king to sign this, and, and we'll all be banished! Oh, what are you gonna do? Well, that's just it! I can't do anything! I'm just a god! But you, you're the queen! What do you mean? You must go to him! You must go to the king! What? Don't you know what happens to people who appear before the king uninvited? Esther! Remember the Peony brothers? Esther! There is no other way! You are the only one who can stop this! No! No, I'm not gonna! I, I didn't even want to be the queen! No! You're smart, Mordecai! Think of another way! Esther, there is no other way! I... I wasn't even brave enough to go to my friend about the apple and, and now you want me to go to the king? Even if he doesn't banish me for showing up, why would he listen to me? I mean, Haman is his right-hand man. I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you this. You wanted to know why you were here, why you became queen. I told you God must have a reason. Esther, perhaps he put you here for such a time as this. So, did she talk to the king? Yeah. She knew that God had made her queen so that she could be in a position to save a whole lot of people. Well, did the king kill her? Nope. And remember that guy that had tricked the king into writing that law that was going to kill all the Jews? Well, the king had him executed. And so, all the Jews were saved because of a girl named Esther. Huh. But Esther's just one example. I mean, how many other kids have made a difference? Abigail Lupi, age 10. Lots of children like to put on shows. Few are as enterprising as Abigail. She performed her first musical review three years ago at an assisted living center in honor of her great-grandmother's 100th birthday. That's when I discovered many of the elderly didn't have visitors, she says. Abigail figured she could remedy that by inviting friends to perform with her at assisted living res residences, nursing homes, and children's hospitals throughout the state. Today, Care Girls, Abigail's ensemble of 13 girls ages 6 to 13, has a repertoire of more than 90 Broadway and pop songs, and they've performed in 20 different locales so far. I like to brighten up people's days and help them have a fun time, says Abigail. If I do my best, they'll have a smile on their faces by the end. Hugs for Haiti, Blair Gooch, age 13. Two days after the devastating January 2010 earthquake in Haiti, Blair saw a little boy crying in a pile of rubble on a newscast. The story brought him to tears. The next day, still thinking about what he'd seen, Blair remembered the teddy bear that always comforted him. Then I thought, we could start a drive for Haiti, says Blair. At school, his teachers let him announce his plan over the PA system and ask other kids to donate bears. Soon, a local TV and radio station got wind, and, via Facebook, other schools joined in. The result? Blair's Bears for Haiti gave 25,000 teddy bears to the island nation and about 22,000 more to nonprofits. This year, Blair's group will collect toys and school supplies, too. Blair's advice to other kids is simple. It doesn't really matter how small or old you are, he says. If you're young and think you can't make a big difference in the world, well, you actually can. Wow, those kids really did make a difference. But great, you can make a difference wherever you are. I mean, even if you help one person, you're making a difference. Kids get bullied every day. That's just the way it is. Sure, schools have policies. My school has a policy. Yeah, that's worked out real well. I am not a bully, and I'm not a victim or a target or whatever they call kids who get bullied. I know I should probably do something, break it up, but really it's none of my business. Well, I guess I could do that. Yeah, and don't limit God to just using people. I mean, he can use anything. I mean, like this little lamb. 
Let me tell you a story, Greg. Oh, good. I love stories. What? I, oh, God. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Josh felt sad when he saw the other lambs running and jumping, because he couldn't. Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He always limped when he walked. When he watched the other lambs run and play, Josh felt sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She was an old cow, and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. She would spend hours with Josh, telling him stories. When Josh got sad because he could not run and jump and play in the grass, Abigail would say, Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt alone. Then one day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. All the sheep were excited. Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group, but the others started laughing at him. Go back, slowpoke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. Then he heard the shepherd's voice. They are right, little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Joshua turned slowly and began limping away. Never before had Joshua felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, and fell on a rock. Don't be sad, little Joshua, said Abigail. God has a special place for those who feel left out. The two friends walked to the stable together. After eating some hay, Joshua lay down on some straw and closed his eyes. Abigail came and rested beside him. Josh was glad to have Abigail as a friend. Soon, Josh was asleep. He dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. He dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, strange noises woke him up. Abigail, he whispered, wake up. I'm scared. Somebody is in here. They looked across the dimly lighted stable. Josh and Abigail were surprised to see a baby lying on some fresh hay in the feed box. The baby's mother was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Josh limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around for something to keep the baby warm. Then Josh remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said softly. Soon, the little child stopped crying. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags to cover the baby. Look, Joseph, this little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua wondered who the baby might be. The baby's name is Jesus. He is God's son. He came from heaven to teach us about God, the mother said. Just then there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds the ones who had left Joshua behind. We saw a bright light and heard the angels, they began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? The young mother smiled. God has heard your prayer, little lamb. This baby is the answer. Somehow Joshua knew this was a special child, and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been like the other sheep, he would have been away in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable 
among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. Joshua turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he said, and told her. God does have a special place for me. The end. Wow, that was really great. I mean, God even wanted to use that little lamb for something big. And who knows? Maybe God even wants to do something big through you. You don't know Jack.